is not subtle taunting from the museum community of the late 19th century Europe. From the 1870s until today, artworks from the Carter era planned their way from the storage room to the museum showcase and not to mention auction houses. Um, however, this was not an easy journey. As you may already know, the museum is hosting uh, uh, currently its first exhibition on cultural art since uh, its reopening in 2001. And um, it mainly focused on the last 70 years of cultural rule in Iran and was made possible by the collaboration we um, had with the community in Tehran and the support of the private collection in um, I believe few of you will visit the exhibition, so I'm just bringing you to uh, with me for a brisk stroll around uh, the exhibition. And I will combine it with um, a discussion on uh, the museographic uh, history and fortune of Kajar uh, art in the West, which means its transition from an object of either ethnographic or uh, um, applied art interest, mainly employed for the training of craftsmen in uh, the museums, I uh, carefully recognize the field of art historical inquiry. Um, a bit of delving in the audience of the museum, uh, which are not uh, um, possible to, uh, to exhibit at the moment, uh, will also be included in this round. And uh, today I also would like to conclude with a quote of a small tree, which is uh, a preview of um, the future plan for the cultural room in the new permanent exhibition, which uh, is going to open in 2024, hopefully, and uh, which symbolically closes uh, a historical cycle and prepare to repeat a loop for the future presentation of cultural art in uh, the um, in Western public collections of Islamic art. So, <coughs> The exhibition concentrates mainly on the impact that photographic techniques had in shaping the public national and international image of Iran between the second half of the 19th century and the first two decades of the 20th century. This, is, uh, um, this was through, first of all, the active promotional role of the Charter Court, and second, the growing interest in the medium. Uh, from the larger strata of the urban and civil society at the turn of the century. As the title suggests, the second half of the 19th century represented a crucial historical moment of change and confrontation for Iranian society, which was drawn between two conflicting <coughs> and un um, interconnected social cultural and artistic phenomena, which are occidentalism and revivalism. Um, these two phenomena went hand in hand if we look at them from uh, a strong political perspective and influence, of course, uh, uh, the art production. Um, the progressively invasive and in many ways controversial presence of Western agents in the running of the Iranian business of here and the mixture of fascination and suspicion that federal rulers and most significantly Mr. Uh, Shah show the four uh, European cultures and artifacts contributed for good or bad, one we know, um, to open the stage of modernity to Iran. Um, a comment from a journalist with, who was preparing a short TV report on the exhibition uh, made me reflect uh, about uh, the interpretative challenge that we had when we um, organized the exhibition, starting from its title. And, um, Pointing to this uh, um, album and print of Standing Young Woman, which you will show in the exhibition, he commented that such an image was 
with its pseudo European, which I assume it meant modern with that, but I don't know about me. And um, because this lady was actually showing a part of um, his hair, uh, her hair. And um, I wonder what he would have said if he would have seen uh, um, something like that, like um, portrait of a uh, Tajus Hussain. Photos, historical postcards uh, issued uh, both locally and abroad, and artworks uh, are inserted uh, into a context of multiple modernities. That's how we try to convey the idea of Iran of open the modern. Um, based on uh, um, the theories enunciated by uh, Schumann and Eisenstein, um, in which uh, 19th century Iranian society actively embraced modernity by critically interpreting it according to its own rules and taste. Comments to images were added whenever images could elucidate uh, to our general public who is quite diverse and might not come to the Pagan Museum to see the Islamic collection, and they just happen to be there sometimes. So how specific was uh, the Iranian social cultural tradition, specific to the Iranian social cultural traditions, visual cultures, and artistic heritage, certain formal choices and subjects exposed in the exhibits? So, and if scale and quantity are some major signs for modernity, then it could be easily affirmed that, that through photography, 19th century Iranian society left its mark on the doorstep of global modernity. Nazir Din Shah and the member of his court grasped at the very early stage the political potential that the new medium uh, of photography could offer and employed it systematically to promote a specific image of Qajar power and grandeur within and outside the national borders. Uh, um, well before, actually, um, other ruling houses worldwide started using photography for uh, um, propaganda um, reasons. And uh, boosted by the possibility that photography could offer in replicating images, Qajar Iran, Qajar Iran became a sort of empire of image, with portraits of the ruling Shah replicated in a variety of media, from precious brochures to ceramics, from popular uh, tea services, or cultural receipts, as the one you see there, which is exposed, that until circulated in Europe, uh, starting from the uh, 1880s, and this was actually produced in Paris, based on uh, uh, um, Iranian, to say, and um, other while the emphasis rests on the documentation of the figure of the Sham and the court life, the first room opposed the image of an authoritative power within a strong tradition of royal representation of the Shah um, to a rising social political antagonism that attempted to undermine the institution of royalty, um, also by originally using photography um, as a tool of political activism. Uh, the larger showcase has been used to accommodate objects uh, um, mostly from the museum holdings that enter the collection through either acquisition or transfer from sister institution in Berlin. Most of the cadre glassware now in the museum has been acquired in the 1880s for the Kunstgewerbe Muse uh, Museum in Berlin, which was founded in 1867. Um, at that time, under, under the directorship of Julius Lessing, who had uh, uh, quite an impulse in the formation of certain area of the Oriental collection, with a process specific focus on applied art. Um, and uh, if you can see the inventory numbers are specified when the objects were acquired, and uh, uh, this is for us in the archive an indication that these were belonging originally to the Museum of Decorative Arts. Um, so along with lacquer, um, textiles, carpets and metal work, contemporary production of glasswork was public, uh, publicly collected for educational purpose in order to train European craftsmen and artisans. Um, the strong colors and clear design has also inspired um, European contemporary luxury production as the one you see from here on your uh, right, um, which is from Venice. <clears throat> 
The museum possesses a small yet varied collection of uh, cartridge glass, and among them there is this uh, uh, one neck bottle, which couldn't be exposed for uh, um, blood conservation reason. Is the blue one on the right? Um, and this technology was rather coveted uh, among collectors for its sharp and extravagant shape, um, as it's exemplified here in this showcase from the Metropolitan Museum, which uh, who has quite a nice collection of glass of project glass works. The kind of European crystal flask depicted next to the young lady perhaps Photon or dancer in the oil paint, which is exposed as well, as analyzing uh, the situation of glass production in Iran during the Qajar period, um, when import of uh, Western goods increased and forms adapted to a new taste, a strategy for export politics as well. Um, the specimen of polychrome ceramic tile and for interior with decorative decoration provides material for making visual comments also on uh, um, ski made fashion. And this is uh, uh, playing very well uh, uh, together with uh, the oil creation. While lacquerware illustrates a long standing tradition which gracefully managed to adapt itself uh, to new visual codes and motifs. The goal was to bring together different categories of artifacts that represented a sector of Iranian handicraft promoted by the Crown and particularly successful among visitors of the great exhibitions, private collectors and curators of ethnographic and applied art collections, while at the same time able to portray the delicate, the delicate interplay between tradition and innovation that Iranian society experienced. Furthermore, Glass, uh, glassware illuminated by a spotlight and was seen probably Sunday, um, helped to create an alluring light atmosphere that resonated with the fascination of, um, of uh, light, contrast, and reflecting surfaces present in many photographs and in contemporary palatial interior architecture. In the second room, teams such as uh, um, Europe Travels of the Shah which meant uh, mostly the lavish promotion of the Qajar uh, power despite its economic weakness and the impression that um, the, the Shah left uh, in European population and literature. Um, followed by uh, photography as a medium of daily documentation, uh, portraits as a means of self-representation uh, for both the court members and the Yoga Society. And with that, the exhibition, so to say, wrapped itself up. So, uh, despite the undisputable historical and artistic value of such objects, why it took so long for Qajar art to shine under the museum spotlight? The answer to this question lies in the constitution of Islamic art as an art historical category to preserve, collect, study, and expose um, a precise set of historical artifacts. Um, I will keep it really short because I think we are running a bit late um, and I will uh, um, briefly analyze only the situation of museums within Germany and specifically within Berlin. Um, the general public started familiarizing with artifacts from the Islamic world during the great exhibitions uh, uh, traveling Europe um, in the second half of the 19th century. And as for Iran, its presence increased progressively concomitantly with the eagerness of the Qajar Iran uh, to be the, or the Qajar uh, ruling house uh, to project a stronger political image to, on the international arena in order to join the train of Western civilization. Uh, visiting uh, the exhibition in Paris uh, in uh, 1817, Nazir Shah expresses satisfaction about the sale of the African exposed, in particular the carpets, which as a state of the noir, are in great demand here abroad at high prices, given a profit of one to ten. Carpets are in some sense uh, the um, usual suspect 
that set the pace uh, for the establishment of uh, the oldest public museum of Islamic art outside the Muslim world. Uh, the forefather and founder of the Persian and Islamic art department at the Kaiser Kurdish Museum, which is today the Bode Museum, in uh, 1904, um, was a man of stern and rather imperial stature, uh, William von Boden was from uh, 1905 until 1920 the general director, or as uh, his colleague dubbed him, the Bismarck of uh, Berlin Museums. Bodem was probably became interested in carpets through his study in Ita uh, of Italian and Flemish Renaissance paintings, in which Anatolian and Persian carpets appear prominently. And in the 1880s, he began a long-lasting collaboration with Julius Julius Jassin, the director of uh, the Museum of Applied Art, um, provided significant contemporary and ancient example uh, of carpets while building his own private collection. Mbode had a universal understanding of art history um, and perceived artworks from the Islamic world as an integral part of the cultural, of the cultural history of mankind. And especially if we consider that for him, the origins of art were rooted in the East. Uh, contemporary ex exposition of artworks and artifacts from the Islamic world did not fully met his expectation or satisfy his taste. And in his memoir, uh, My Leben, he remember um, the first carpet exhibition in Vienna in 1892 with the following words, and I quote. Die Ausstellung war sehr gemischt und geschmacklos in der Anomie. Gewinkte moderne Wagen hinnehmen äh, ehrlich alte Teppichen so ungeordnet wie in einem gewöhnlichen türkischen Bazar. Und er war ein Mann von straight opinions, I guess. So, from this short quotation, um, it is easy to spot uh, his attitude towards contemporary Islamic art. The contempt in which a scholar that had the late 18th and 19th century art production from the Qatar Iran is connected to the prejudicial idea of an unavoidable cultural decadence that followed the golden age of the Safavids. For instance, large format paintings from Iran, either from the Zand and Qatar era, and which are today the everybody darling uh, of Qatar art, were collected mainly for their documentary value to study and compare specimens of textile, jewelry, objects of applied art. In this sense, we should consider that the acquisition that you see just above in uh, um, 1854 and the later transfer to the Museum uh, of Volkerkunde, which is today the Ethnologische Museum, in 1877, some large form of painting from the time of Muhammad Shah. They were not recognized as artworks for the same very reason, abstraction, flatness, lack of perspective, which is not that evident here, Google. Um, um, for the same, sorry. They were not recognized as artworks for the same very reason, other products were greatly appreciated in the field of applied art and design, such as textile and carpets. Uh, the purity of Islamic aesthetic language was somehow perceived as tainted by the hybrid nature that this work uh, <coughs> part of the offered. While Orientalism was an alluring idea, Occidentalism was perceived as a sign of cultural corruptions. Others sold after objects uh, um, for uh, um, other sold after objects for ethnological collection were elements of the decorative tile works, which were easy to carry along and to pack. And so, glazed tile with figurative motives, as the one we saw, were very often acquired by travelers and scholars as a souvenir. And together with other artifacts, museums, agents, or collectors purchased them uh, um, as they supposedly return a representative and faithful image of the habits and culture of a contemporary non-European population. And here you can see a picture of uh, the first exhibition of Islamic art in the today Bode Museum. It was quite packed. Um, on top of that, we should consider the general opposition that Bode encountered 
against the foundation of, his, of the Islamic department in 1904, in particular from colleagues of uh, uh, the Museum of Kuala, for Kalkunde, and the uh, Kunstgewerbe Museum, and mainly because of internal conflicts. And uh, I, I didn't know it's so small, uh, but uh, the first one is a quotation from Julius Lassen, he was actually uh, complaining because, uh, um, so the, he complains actually, and the ground is, um, Bode um, donated a lot of carpets to the Museum of Islamic Art and only one to, uh, from his private collection and only one to um, the um, Kunstgewerbe Museum. And on, for this reason, um, Lessing somehow contested saying that carpets, they are actually things that we are used to, so they are not so um, stranger to us. And um, the other one is from Albert Grunberg, um, and it's uh, actually a recurrent uh, theme in uh, Islamic cards because it's uh, referring again to uh, the um, um, prohibition of image. And um, quite recently I also found uh, uh, that The Economist uh, published in 2015 an article saying why Islamic cards uh, um, forbid um, a representation of the Prophet Muhammad and uh, a figurative representation and it was titled like uh, the, the economic explain why. But, yeah. um, besides of these two internal among the many, these two of this um, of internal criticism, the press as well was not particularly impressed and welcomed the opening of the new department with cold words and skepticism. Uh, which must have bitten rather deeply the first director of the Museum of Islamic Art, uh, Kelly Stalin, as he still recalled the episode something like 30 years later in uh, uh, some writing. And uh, I report what he says uh, in uh, an article from Klaus Christian. Um, an eine nämlich genannte Zeitung erinnert er sich besonders, denn sie fand, dass die neue Seele den Eindruck einer Synagoge machte. Zudem beklagte sie die Verschwendung von Steuergeldern. Auf den Einwand, es handelt sich nur um Geschenke und Leihgaben, Leihgaben fragte die gleiche Zeitung, ob es nicht mit dem Gebe so unliebsame und kunstlerische minderwertige Sachen abzulehnen. Um, was for circa 100 years yeah, think of that. Uh, from the new, uh, inauguration of the um, 1867 uh, Exposi uh, Exposition Universelle in Paris to the opening of the first European Museum of Decorative Art and Ethnographic Collection to the celebration of the 10th year Jubilee for the first great exhibition in London in 1951. Artifacts from the Qajar era were looked by many Western historians of Islamic art as a sort of Cinderella of the arts. Uh, this happening within a field which was itself and still today is struggling in search of its own disciplinary identity. And the situation did not look particularly favorable for uh, um, a complete turnaround. Um, it is significant that, for instance, Ernst Kinnell, who was uh, quite a prominent figure in uh, uh, the uh, museum scene for, um, and director of the Museum of Islamic Art, described fine lacquerware uh, production from the current time uh, as, in rather dismissal terms, um, dis um, describing them as uh, tasteless objects in a publication of uh, 1955 and again in 1963. Things start changing after the 1951 jubilee of the Great Exhibition in London, which introduced a larger audience to a whole array of objects that seems to uh, be appreciated quite a lot. The problem of Qajar art, and in particular of its painting, and the, re the reason it caused mostly among scholars, is that too much of it has survived, as Basil Robinson has pointed out. And if the mirrored and suffered paintings has been bestowed of the pattern of time, um, even when it does not stand to its own standard, Qajar art didn't have such a privilege. It was in fact too modern. 
changes in scholarship in the second half of the 20th century, the post-colonial and transfer tours, the 1998 um, Brooklyn Museum exhibition on Kaja royal painting, plus the growing interest of tribunal photography and uh, a major involvement of non-European collector whose state and sensibility differed from those of uh, Western scholars, all contributed to give uh, casual art a long-awaited winning hand to the museum works. So far, um, the fair amount of objects from the Qajar Iran and the collection of the Museum of Islamic Art in Berlin has not founded a location in the room of a permanent exhibition. This is, this, is, this is certainly due to a current lack of space in the museum and to a lesser but still significant extent to an arrangement that follows classical guidelines in the presentation of artifacts from the Islamic world. The permanent exhibition today stopped with objects from the late Ottoman period, databled between uh, the 17th and the 18th century, and the rest is just away in the storage rooms. The situation will change by uh, 2024 for, um, for the first time in a, a Western Museum of Islamic Art, an independent rule will be entirely dedicated to the, pres um, to, uh, the presentation of Qajar art on the third floor of uh, the newly renovated north wing of the uh, Pergamon Museum. Other museums such as the uh, uh, Victorian Urban Museum uh, with its uh, Jamil Gallery opened in 2008, the Brooklyn Museum of Art with uh, something like 300 objects from the Carter time, and the new um, galleries of Islamic Court at the Metropolitan Museum of a presentation of the Carter period through a selection of objects. <coughs> Nonetheless, such a historical period with its artistic production is not discussed separately, separately to highlight main traits and historical context. Um, this is what you say, a first plan, so it's not definitive, but can give you an idea of the room. It's a, a, a it contains a presentation of large-scale paintings, and recently the museum received uh, um, as a, a long-term loan of this um, for um, Kajar paintings from the Oppenheim-Stiftung in Köln. You see two of them. One is uh, in the storage room, the other one is exposed in the exhibition. Loans uh, also from the Ethnological Museum, which we just saw, um, have been also requested uh, since the two collections integrate each other very well in terms of time and space frame, and they won't be that far from each other once uh, uh, the Berlin and Schloss will be uh, completed. Uh, possibly tile works, Lego work, and metal works, in particular weapons, to stress the problematic relation uh, uh, with the West which passes also through the strengthening of the uh, Qajar army with the assistance of Western officials and uh, uh, via European technical education. So encapsulated uh, between, uh, I'm not sure if you can see very well, we have to step out. Oops, I think I did something wrong. Ich habe etwas falsch gemacht. Das ist nicht meine. So, um, the, oh, but this is custom, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, to uh, conclude, it would be integrated within uh, um, a parkour uh, trail. Um, containing on one side the Ottoman uh, room and then uh, uh, the Seljuk room on the other side and uh, um, an orientation room uh, um, next to it introducing the uh, Safavid models and uh, uh, the Ottoman. So in this way they will stand independently in terms of space but yet visually and thematically connected with uh, their historical uh, um, precursor. Um, so, if 
And I want to conclude, like, just saying that, that if the 1980, um, uh, 19, 1998 Brooklyn exhibition somehow showed that the Carter ever arrived, um, with this new intervention, it seems that uh, um, it will have no intention to leave the museum any soon. Thank you. Thank you.